What is up guys, I'm John the Potter. Welcome to my pottery studio. Today I wanna to do a full process video, show you guys every single different piece of the pottery process, take you along from the throwing to the trimming to the handling to the loading in the bisque kiln to the glazing and then loading back and then having finished pieces. It's gonna be a really fun, exciting video. I'm gonna get you a ton of information really quickly. So if you're a beginner or you don't know that much or you're just interested in how we run a studio that produces over 5,000 pieces, we're on track to produce over 5,000 pieces this year, then this is gonna be a super fun video. Uh, and for the first time ever, we have these we're a little off-centered t-shirts going up for sale, as well as I have pots that go up for sale the first Sunday. I try and do a restock the first Sunday of every month, so that's March 3rd at 6 p.m. So let's check it out and go in the studio and show you guys what we do every day in here. Okay, so the process really starts here. This is where all the clay is. So this is probably about a thousand pounds of clay. We have two different kinds of clay. We have B clay from Continental Clay, which is a porcelain stoneware mix. And then we have buff stoneware, which is more of a brown stone color. This would be the difference in the clay colors. So you can see that's buff stoneware in the gas kiln. Uh, this is B clay in the gas kiln. So those are the two different kinds of clays that we use. So I'm gonna grab some clay and throw a piece that is about looking like this. So this was thrown yesterday. And so I'll talk about that because obviously the whole process just takes time, right? You throw a pot and then you got to let it dry before you can flip it over and then work on it. So this is our clay that we're going to use. We're going to take about one and a quarter pound from this to throw. I like to throw everything on bats. So this is like a wood composite board that I got from Continental Clay, which I really like. I can, the square helps to save space. So I can take them, put them on these wear boards. I can fit 10 on a wear board and then come back when the rims have dried. So I, didn't, I don't get any warping or indentations or anything. So I put that in the middle. First thing I do is cone up and then cone down. Get that really nice in the center. And then I open it up with just one finger. Some people use their thumbs, some people use two fingers, some people, you know, a lot of people have different ways. That's just the way that I've done. Then I use a sponge. I like these mud tool sponges. I use a couple different sponges while I'm throwing, but for the actual throwing and pulling of the walls, I like to use these mud tools. That just helps to keep it wet. So I'm basically just pinching that clay between my fingers so that I can thin it out basically trying to get all the clay from the base up to the top so it has a super even thickness. With mugs like this, I typically can do it in two or maybe three pulls. So that's two pulls right there. I probably could stop, but I'm gonna just thin it out a tiny bit more. So there you go, that I feel really good about the wall thickness of that. I just refine the lip every single time. Can't do that too much make sure that that's really smooth. And then I wanna get it, make sure it's pretty wet to put the little spiral in there. So then that's just a fun design element that I put in there. Helps with the cool glazing. Then I take a super absorbent sponge and mop, sop out the water. You may wanna make sure there's no water left in there. And that's it. Some people would take a wire right now and run it in, which I couldn't do, but normally I don't do that, so then that would be more typical, people would do that. I don't always do that, sometimes I do. Then I would take it and put it over on my shelf. Okay, so now, depending on the time of year, that is obviously way too wet to work with right now. If I tried to touch it, I would totally deform the mug. But if it's winter time in Minnesota, then it will take about four, three, four hours before that's ready to flip over and then dry a little more because you really want to focus on drying evenly. Everything's about evenness, right? You want the same even thickness walls. You want it to dry evenly top to bottom. Anyway, so this was thrown yesterday and then it was covered with plastic so that it didn't dry out anymore. So now I'm going to trim it, trim the base because right now the base is just kind of ugly and has a little extra clay there. So I'll trim that and then I'll put a handle on it. Uh, and then after that, it'll be done and we'll go to the next stage. All right. So this bat is just a rubber bat that helps to just keep it in the center. So what I do is I'll either like kind of just tap center it 
or I can just pretty much eyeball it and get it right in the center. A lot of times when they teach you, they will have you put little balls of clay around, which is great, but you don't technically need to do that. I use what's just a little spinner, which this is just made out of clay. And what I do is put it right on top of there and that just helps provide enough pressure that the mug won't move and my finger can spin. And so I, I keep the trimming fairly simple. I just put an edge on the bottom like that and then I'll take make sure that the bottom is really, really flat or it's a little bit indented in the middle. Because what's the worst is when you end up with a pot that has like the deepest part is the middle and it won't sit flat. So I'll just kind of take a little bit from the middle, go to the outside, kind of run my finger on the edge to smooth it. And there you go. Okay, so after it's trimmed, then we're gonna put a handle on it. And so I have clay in this extruder that we're going to extrude out of here. So that just is basically pushes it through a little die. So the die is that size and it pushes the clay right through it, making a really nice even handle. And this works super well if you wanna make a bunch of handles because we can fill that thing with clay, lay out a bunch of handles and then do, 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 and just get a bunch done. So then for this, I would cut my handle down to about five, six inches, something like that. Then I would take my scoring tool, which you can score with a needle tool, you can score with anything that's just gonna make scratches. And then I would score that there, score the mug, form the handle, and then I'm gonna put slip, which is just really watered down clay, like that. And then basically I'm just sticking that on there and then blending that in, which you can, there's many, many different kinds of handles that you can make. You can pull handles, you can use different types of clay, you can use slabs, there you go. And then that would be a handle. The last step before we let it dry is I'll stamp it. So I always put my stamp right by the handle. Stamp made by Justin's Makery if you need one made. So then it's a little JTP under there which this year we do have a different one that has been, it says JTP and then it says 2024 on it, but it's kind of hard to get that one on pots. All right, then we take this mug over to this room and this is where we let things dry. This is the kiln room. I'll say the electric kiln room because we also have a gas kiln shed. And so these were pots that were all done yesterday and I'll take the plastic off now. We cover them with plastic just overnight, just so they can get to a really even, consistency. So then this is our mug right here. I would put it there. Normally I'd cover it with plastic for about a day. And then after all of this is dry, it would get loaded into this kiln, which is the kiln that we use for bisking. Can fit around a hundred mugs into that kiln. And then we would fire that up to cone 04. Cone 04 is 1945 degrees. So that gets fired and then once those are done they come back out here and that is what all these pots are this is called bisque ware bisque ware means it's been fired one time uh, to a lower temperature and now we can apply glaze to it so this area is all different glazes we have a ton of different glazes and this wall is all test tiles with all the different glazes fired to cone seven. These pots are all the pots that are going up. Plus we have a full electric kiln and a full gas kiln that is also going up too. Okay, so this is the bisque ware that's been fired once already. We are going to dip these into diff two different glazes. So it's gonna end up looking like this. So this has sandstone on the base and then Norse blue on the inside and a little on the rim. So first thing we do is we mix up the glaze really well. Super important that the glaze is completely mixed. So we use that drill. So then I have my pot. I'm gonna put my hand right on the inside so I just get the outside, dip that in there, pull it out. And then I just take a sponge. Some people will use wax on the bottoms but I just do that, put the sponge, and then take the sponge, the wet sponge, and wipe off the bottom glaze, like that. All right, so the next one, I just want to glaze the inside and then a little on the rim. So I'll take a little pitcher to fill up with glaze, pour the glaze inside, and then as I pour it out, I'm turning it so that I get the whole rim like that. And then I will dip it a little on the outside so that that Norse blue and that sandstone overlap. And a lot of times the transition between glazes is where you get really cool effects. So I wanna make sure that I do have some transition but not too much because if I dipped it way down, then I might get dripping off the pot 
like what has happened to many of these. So some glazes are really, really drippy and others are really stable and won't move at all. And so you just have to kind of test and learn about your glazes to learn uh, which ones are gonna run and which ones won't and that you can layer. So once we have between 40 and 50 pots glazed, then that's enough to load our SCUT 1027, which is the one that we usually put the glaze firings in. So make sure that bottom is clean and we bring it back in here. Normally I would set it right on this and there would be full pots ready to load. And then we would load it in here, which I can show you that, but this kiln right now is at 700 degrees. We can take a little peek. That kiln is a little too hot to unload right now. We'll probably unload it in three or four hours. So we either load it in that, or we also have a gas kiln, which we are also firing right now. And I'll show you that. So this is our gas kiln, which we fire to cone 10 instead of to cone seven. And we fire it in reduction, which means that we're limiting the amount of oxygen that is in there. And the way that you can tell it's in reduction is when I pull this out right now, whoosh, there's a flame coming out because the flame inside the kiln wants to find oxygen. So it's coming out of the kiln. The other way that we can tell that it's in reduction is by looking at this oxy probe. So this oxy probe is reading 819 right now, which means that it's in pretty heavy reduction. So these are the burners back here. I'm gonna just pull out the damper a little bit because it seems like it's quite heavy reduction. So after the pots are glazed, we either load it into the electric kiln or we would come load it into the gas kiln. So then the gas kiln will fire most of today and then we'll be able to unload it tomorrow. The electric kiln fired overnight last night and we'll be able to unload it today. So the gas kiln's been really fun. It's quite a bit different than the electric kiln. It takes a little more work planning. It is a little bit bigger so we can fit more pots in it, uh, but it just gives you a whole different style of pots, which is super fun. And then once it comes out, the last thing that we do for every single pot that comes out of the kiln is we use this diamond core grinding pad to grind the bottom. And so that does a couple things. Anything that is on the bottom that came from the kiln shelves, like a little piece of glaze or a little piece of clay that's sharp, that gets it off. So what we do is we take water, you never wanna grind anything dry, and then we just run, like run this on that. And that grinds off any little pieces of anything. It can also flatten the mug, so if the mug sits on the counter and it wobbles a little bit, then doing this for 10 or 20 seconds for each pot will make sure that it sits completely flat and won't scratch anyone's table. All right guys, that is it for this video. Thanks so much for watching. That is the whole process from start to finish, from clay to finished piece. So if you guys want any pieces, I have a bunch of pots going up in the March collection, March 3rd at 6 p.m., all what's here, all what's there, all what's gonna come out in the gas kiln uh, that we are firing today, so it's gonna be a good one. All right, what did I miss? What do you guys wanna see more of? What happened in the studio that you wanna see more of, or what do you do in your studio? Love to see the comments below. Otherwise, I'll see you guys in the next video.